comes a time when we heed a certain call when the world so on behalf of Professor Matthew I'd like to welcome everybody to the China Europe International Business School and over the past 10 years we have been ranked as the second best business school not in Ghana we don't have competitors in Ghana so thank you very much for coming and I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome everybody especially Irene for this opportunity at least you know where we started from and the capacity building continues so we are here this evening for the graduation ceremony for the second batch of the HR mentoring program where experience is shared through learning, where they had the opportunities to interact and learn from the best we have. And I remember doing the capstone project when we had, <laughs> they were shocked to have judges from outside, international judges. And it was quite interesting. So for this journey, we are going to start today's program. We are going to have a brief comment from uh, our executive director. Prof, please. Right. So I think one of the interesting things these days is that because of the mass, you hardly recognize, <laughs> recognize people you know. So I was actually looking around, trying to identify the mentees, and it was really, really difficult for me to actually identify them. So I wasn't sure whether they're all here or they are actually sent some representatives or those things to, uh, to come in. But I think for us as an institution, uh, this is probably one of the best decisions we've made. Uh, when we had this conversation with Irene about two, three years ago, I think about two years ago, if I can remember <laughs> very well. And then we went for the graduation of the, the last cohort. Um, I think that was at Marriott, and unfortunately, yours is not at Marriott, but, <laughs> but this is a better place than Marriott. And so we had a discussion at a time, and then we thought immediately this is the right thing to do, um, to actually contribute to nurturing future HR directors. And for us as an institution, we would like to be associated with you individually as well as the, this particular program. So I'd like to welcome you all to this, what I would call, very brief and short event. Uh, Irene, thank you very much for inviting us to be part of this program. And also, of course, uh, Nixon, who we've worked with on this program from the very beginning. And Mr. Zaki, good to see you as well. Okay. And I think Going forward, I mean, we'll be having a discussion anyway in terms of how the program will actually um, evolve in the future. But just to say that I think we've been, uh, the institution has been enriched in terms of having this uh, collaboration and having you on this program. Uh, my colleagues, Andrew and Ken, Celestine, and Lady Who has been, <laughs> I wouldn't call it as a, uh, I, I want to say terrorist, but I wouldn't use the word terrorist. Chasing you on WhatsApp and everything to submit your, your capstone project. I'd like to thank you all. But I think the most important people to welcome to this um, session is actually you, the mentees, for actually committing your time. Uh, this program should have ended earlier, but I think it's just due to things beyond us, our control. But even when we moved the program actually online, I think you were still committed. So this actually showed the dedication and your commitment. So thank you very much for being part of this program. And this shouldn't be the end of the journey with us and not with the program. And I'm sure when Irene uh, comes up here, she will have more to say about it. But I'd like to once again welcome you to this evening. And Irene, once again, thank you very much for inviting us to be part of this program. So enjoy the evening. I don't know. I've searched through the internet whether I'll find, and I've been asking around whether there is an HR program that helps to bridge the gap for professionals. And I've never seen any. 
And I remember during their capstone project, it was during the COVID lady, do you remember? And we have to call Laurentia. Where's Laurentia? And their group, they were supposed to have a call to defend their, their, their capstone. And some of the members, when the, the mic was on, she was shouting. And where's Theophilus? I remember the commitment was there. I don't really know what Irene did for people to sacrifice their time just to meet their mentor, just to, to be on this program. So Irene, please. Come and tell us what you did. Can you hear me? Okay, so we're in the house. This is wonderful. Good evening to you all. And I, I understand what you mean now, Prof, because when I look around, I have to really, like, really look. I see some have maybe slightly expanded. Others, I feel like you've gone on some sort of health retreat or regime. All sorts of things have been going on. And I'm sure when we break, we'll get the chance to kind of engage and find out what has been going on with us all. So first of all, I say welcome. It is fantastic, I have to say this, to see you in person. I think right now we'll be sitting with a screen and we'll be saying, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Is your mic on? You're muted, right? So many things, the camera's not working, my internet is down, I speak like a robot. All of that would be going on right now, and it would be a little bit challenging. So I want to take the opportunity first to welcome you to SIBS. I know that we've had Professor Matthew and his team welcome you. Um, I also want to welcome the Carving Clay team as well. They have also been behind the scenes, making sure that activities are, are going on. And I want to, I know you've just walked in, Patricia, but I want to welcome you to CEO of Vodafone Ghana. We are grateful to have your presence this evening and you're most welcome. We have just started, so your timing is excellent. Um, I was thinking, as, as Andrew was saying about the program and why, why this program and why now? And it made me reflect and think about a couple of years ago, and I'm sure for some of you, you may have heard the story, but um, let me indulge you a little. A couple of years ago, I, I, I mean, I still get it now. Often I would be approached, can you mentor me? Can you help me? This is my challenge. Um, and a lot of the time it was HR managers who didn't really have an HR structure necessarily. They reported to the general manager. I think a lot of you will understand and therefore didn't always feel that your voice was being heard. And so there was a lot of time, a lot of advice. I would obviously support one or two. And then it got to the point where I couldn't support the requests that were coming in. And I was saying to myself, oh, if I could do something to bring together HR professionals, look at the gaps, create that safe, and I use the word safe, and I think you know when we talk about psychological safety, have you all heard that term, psychological safety? We need a safe place to kind of engage with our own people and have conversations and know that's where it stays. We want to stay on trend. Maybe there's something happening in your organization and guess what, it's happening in this organization and therefore, who knows, we can come together and resolve issues. So for me, it started to get me thinking, what could I do? Is it a one day event? You bring HR professionals together for a day, but I felt that the impact, you know, we come together, we have a great time and we leave. I'm looking for something that potentially has a lot of impact and sustainable. And I remember at the time, I'm sure I spoke to Nixon at the time and said, oh, I'm looking to think about doing a program. And when I said, I think the program could be 12 months. <laughs> I'm sure your response was, mm, was it, it's not going to work. And I remember saying, but if we could design it in a way where mentees could meet once a month, you know, resource personnel paired up with mentors, seasoned professionals from industry. And I remember, and I, I was getting some pushback from my team around this, but I was very, I think at the time, very determined to make a difference. And I remember going to IHRMP 
and having a conversation at the time I've been awarded um, HR Practitioner of the Year and going over to speak to IHRMP and saying, look, I want to do something back for the profession. I think that when you get to a certain level in your own career, you feel that you need to give back. So that's what I did. And they said, wow, this is a great idea. Let's come together. And that's really how the HR mentoring program was born, along with the support at the time of Tullo. And I think for me, it was about helping to bridge the gap. There were genuine gaps that I could see when I met and engaged with a number of HR professionals. And I could hear organizations also saying, we need stronger HR. We need our HR to be more strategic. We need more support and so forth. And so I felt that we were potentially bridging the gap. And 2019, you were the second cohort. You all know the process you went through to kind of take your seat. I still get emails sometimes where people said, I've applied for your HR mentoring program, Irene, two times, and I haven't been successful. So you're very, very lucky to be sitting in your seat. You've done very well to get here. There are many others that would love to take the opportunity. And we started in 2019. We are in 20 what? Wow. And here we are. So just as we were starting, we were sitting all in this room. We were saying, oh, we've, 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 we've kind of upgraded ourselves from the Tullow meeting room to Sib's office and we've got an auditorium. We were very excited. And then we had Sibs on board and we had a few engagements. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, we found ourselves in the middle of a pandemic. In fact, at the beginning of a pandemic, because most of us probably thought, mm, well, give it a few weeks, maybe a few months. I remember saying to somebody at the time, oh, by August, I'm sure you all did this, by August, because this was March, right? By August, I think things will be back to normal. We are 2021. We all have this. And we are in a new, new normal. But what's really interesting, so in terms of the experience, that had to halt. And all of a sudden, we found ourselves in a situation where, wow, we were having this face-to-face. -face. We didn't even start thinking about what it meant to be virtual and how would that actually work. So we were all scratching our heads. But guess what? At the same time we were doing that, I know all of you here who are HR professionals had a huge challenge. All of a sudden, where before HR, you're probably doing your thing, you are front and center of the organization. I'm sure your phone was ringing off the hook. People were ringing, well-being issues, restructuring, safety, how the employees get to work. Do we have a policy on virtual working? Do we have the resources and the laptops? How do we meet? How does it work? How do we get engagement? The list goes on and on and on. And I remember meeting some of you and speaking to a number of HR professionals about, my goodness, this is really my role as HR. And guess what? It hadn't been done before. So you can't even go to the manual and ask, so in this situation, what do we do? We were thinking on our feet, sometimes getting it right, sometimes not. And actually, you are dealing with life and death situations. That puts a whole new perspective on our role. And so, when I look back at that moment in the time and where we found ourselves, you've been in the thick of it. You've really been going through quite a lot. And I know this year we celebrated International um, Human Resources Day, and I think absolutely very appropriate because what I find sometimes, every leader, by the way, will have their own challenges and will be going through a lot to keep their businesses going. But I think as some, some of us who are the right-hand person to those leaders, I have to say I want to take a moment to commend you because I think that often we are overlooked. We are very busy looking at others and organizations and we don't often look at ourselves. So I think you should give yourself a bit of a 
round of applause because you've done an amazing job. Your organizations may not have said it, they may have taken some things for granted, but I know good organizations would absolutely be saying you were their rock. So we had the pandemic, and then obviously for all of us as individuals, that certainly rocked our world, and that really disturbed. But I take this and, and say to you, in my own personal career, all the challenging situations, and there have been many, I sit here and I may look as if I'm smiling, smiling. I have had stress just like everybody else. But I say that these challenging situations have been the making of me as an individual, as a professional, as a person. And I think it's important for you to reflect on that because sometimes you think you're going through quite a lot, and you are, but you need to take the moment to say, what am I learning from this? What have I learned? What can I learn from this situation? I think it makes the growing of us. And if, as HR people as we are, it is these difficult situations that actually prepare us well for the jobs that we do. Now, as I look at you all, I think many of you are now very proficient in flexible working, well-being, engagement, where before you were kind of finding your feet, you've got examples to share. And I think that I'm really hoping that the program through this learning has also cemented that learning for you. You know, I think what is also important about the program is that instant relationship and the connections you now have that you didn't have before. If you didn't have a community of HR colleagues, you do now, because as a result of you coming together, I'm sure your WhatsApp um, group is blowing up with messages and all sorts of things, and yeah, you're being there to support each other where you didn't have that before. So I want to leave you with a couple of areas to think about in regards to HR trends and things that are actually happening you know and we sometimes we talk about these things without giving it some due thought because a lot of the time we're very busy doing our work but remote working remote working and now we talk about hybrid working our reality before we said oh at some point we will go back right in globally, there's big conversations about vaccine, no vaccine. So people with no vaccine, can they go back? Where do we stand? What's the legal ramifications of that? What's the policy on that? It may come to your doorstep. A lot of you are affiliated to multinational organizations. There may be a global policy on this. What, what are you going to do? Are you thinking about it? Is remote working, hybrid working, working? Is it providing the solutions to business. What is your perspective on that as an HR professional? How do you add value? Have you been doing your research to add value? Should somebody like Patricia ask you for support and what your view is? Or are you now, now that your CEO has asked you, now you're going to run back and try and find out the information? Are you not part of the conversation? Leadership. Leadership attraction and leadership development. Leadership generally put, is always going to be in vogue. You are always going to need to find talented individuals. And actually, at a time like this, more than ever. I think it's important to also be up to date on the trends and the issues of the day. Right? You don't want to be out of touch on various issues that happen, and you're not part of the conversation. And please, Think and look at how you can provide real solutions. Real solutions that make a difference to the company's performance and bottom line. Not because I hear too often, as for you HR people, you're just interested in your policy, you're interested in your timeline, right? As long as we have the appraisal process, it starts in October, it finishes by the 31st of December, Please, can you send me your form? You haven't filled the form in. We need to put it in the system, and we don't put it in the system. That's, what the, that's the language we use. Not that how, we, how effective is that framework 
And is it working? We don't do that. And I'm sure some of you do, but... So I think it's important to continue the journey on development um, and, and continue to grow, continue to develop. Be, you have the opportunity to be the best, best version of yourself. Your development, as I always say to lots, is in your hands. Take charge. So I want to use the opportunity to say thank you very much to IHRMP, because when we first started this, we wanted to be associated with an HR institution, and we've achieved that, and we're very grateful for the support that you've, you give us. And I want to say thank you so much, Professor Matthew and the team at SIBS, because you know by pairing up with you and, and having the same type of thinking and the support that you have given us has given us a lot of credibility um, we're able to really measure the impact that we make on this program. And I can only see that the relationship continues, gets strengthened, and we move to new heights. So I'm very grateful for the support. I'm grateful um, to the team um, behind the scenes. I know there's various actors within on, in the plays, and my own team. Um, and my team will come later and talk about the program in more detail. I want to thank Patricia. I know you haven't come up yet, but thank you so much for your time. Um, it's going to be wonderful to hear from a seasoned chief executive. We always want to hear, have that perspective to give us a bit of a reality. And of course, I can't forget you, the mentees. Um, you've been committed. And even through these challenging, difficult times, you've been extremely committed. And that goes also for your mentors. I mean, they have a lot of dedication, a lot of passion, um, time and energy to support you through your journey. And I think I would say uh, thank you so much, because without that support, I think the mentees will, it won't be the same. So congratulations. I hope as mentees, you have really learned something. You know, for me, what's important is your takeaway, your learning, your impact, what you've done, how you've done it, how it's made you a better professional, I'm looking forward to hearing all of those stories. And on that note, I say congratulations to you. Well done, Aiko. Thank you very much. Um, I really spoke about uh, the journey. And I'm interested in, 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 in knowing the journey, the journey they went through. I saw part of the journey. And part of the journey I saw was that, so, so this is a secret, eh? They have a platform. I was fortunate to be on a platform. I'm not an HR person. And I wake up in the morning and I say, I, I read, what do you do to a staff who wants to stay at home and not come to work and tell you now? Then I ask myself, where am I moving? Then lunch time, I'm going through my messages and I see a new one. So how long can they sit at home? Then I realized I'm on the wrong place. I went to prof. I said, finance and marketing, what should we do? Thank you very much. So let's get ready to, we have a short video for you about their journey. They're going to tell us about their journey, so. There comes a time when we heed a certain call. When the world must come together. My name is Derek Okwefriye, a participant of the Cohort 2 of the HR Mentorship Program. My experience on the HR Mentorship Program has been fantastic, and I particularly enjoyed benefiting from seasoned HR professionals during our monthly sessions at the China Europe International Business School. My favorite session was HR as a business partner, led by Mrs. Irina Sari. Generally, my experience on the program has been a journey of self-discovery, and I'm glad that I managed to build some meaningful connections with my fellow participants, whom I call friends now. And I will encourage everyone who is yet to take their future into their own hands 
um, to get mentorship and also join the program. Hi, my name is Eugenia and I'm a member of the cohort two of the HR mentorship program. Uh, my favorite session, I have two favorite sections actually, session on finance, because it took uh, HR to the next level for me. Um, through it, now I, I have a very keen interest in strategic HR. Uh, aside from the traditional uh, view that we usually have of HR, HR now I'm thinking how is HR contributing to the core business, the growth of the business. The other session I also enjoyed most was a capstone project because uh, whilst it was challenging, it was very practical. And the challenge we had to deal with was slightly different from what I would face on a day-to-day -day basis. So it, it was an eye-opener for me. Hi, my name is Amanda. Joining the HR mentorship program has been one of the best experiences I've had in my journey as an HR professional. I enjoyed all the sessions. They were really insightful and impactful. The session I enjoyed most was the one with Austin Gami on the Labour Act. It was very interactive and I had a lot to take home that day. I want to thank Irene for this opportunity. My name is Rachel Tete. Joining the HR Mentoring Program has been impactful and a wonderful experience in my HR career growth. I enjoyed every aspect of the HR Mentoring Program, especially our monthly face-to-face -face interactions with the seasoned HR professionals. My mentor boosted my morale and confidence in handling difficult HR issues at work. To Irene, I say thank you. Long live the HR mentoring program. Hi, I'm Pamela Margaret, and I want to say that my journey on this mentorship program has been very rewarding. I've learned a lot. I've become a better HR person. Um, I'm a bit more vocal on my HR issues, um, where otherwise I'd have just been quiet. I know I have a strong, solid team members that I can go to when I face any problems. We've met wonderful mentors, teachers who have imparted a lot to us. And my mentor especially has been very helpful to me to still stay in touch with him. Thank you very much, Irene. Thank you very much, Sibs, IHRMP, all the organizers. Hi, everyone. My name is Steve Lost Kombe, HR Specialist at Plan International Ghana. Uh, for me, if there's one thing I've taken out of this program, it is the power of network. Through this program, I've come to know very seasoned HR practitioners, both as mentors and mentees, and I've really learned a lot from them by sharing views and perspectives on various HR issues. My career can only get better with this confidence and network that I've you know, really harnessed from the program. And I'm really grateful to Irene and all the organizers. It has been an exciting and riveting journey getting the opportunity to meet and interact with top HR professionals and to tap into their plethora of knowledge. Every session impacted greatly on my career. However, one session that I could easily relate to had to do with handling difficult conversations. And I say so because as HR people, as HR practitioners, we do find ourselves in situations where we have to deal and manage difficult conversations amongst our team members, with our superiors, and so that session really gave me insight into that subject area. I want to say a big thank you to Irene and the team at Calvin Clay for putting this together. I say thank you and God bless you all. Yeah, um, good evening once again. Um, well, what can we say? Uh, we are so grateful um, for this one year that we've been in the program. Um, I've been asked to give a very short report, and uh, I'll try to do that very shortly. Um, our journey started when we um, applied to enroll in the program. Um, for, about 40 of us went through rigorous selection process, and eventually 23 of us were selected to take part in the program. And um, after we've been selected, we were, we were assigned mentors, and um, um, each of us were assigned mentors. And we had the opportunity to actually meet with these mentors and then learn from them. Um, the element or the various part of the program were um, the, the monthly sessions we, we had. The, the sessions that we had were HR, HR professional as business partners, building core HR capabilities, 
managing employee relations and labor law, dealing with difficult conversations, technology and HR analytics, finance for HR professionals, building effective engagement strategies, being a school influencer and a communicator, being, being an agent of change in your organization, talent management and planning. And then the final session we had was on personal branding. Now, um, we, we had a lot of benefits from the program. Um, I would mention some of the um, sections that personally I, I benefited a lot. For instance, um, the, the first um, session we had with Ira was on HR professionals as business partners. I, 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 like I said in, in, in one of the conversations I had with my colleagues, after that time we, we came to the program, I mean the mentorship program, my institution was transitioning from um, the normal or the traditional HR you know, department to be the strategic HR business partner. So um, when we went back, I, I told my people in the office, I mean the HR department, that um, this was the program I, I took part in. And it coincided, it coincided with the, the process we were trying to undergo to transition from the traditional HR to the strategic HR management. And so I was tasked to um, present a report and then make, make a presentation on how our department can implement uh, HR business partnership model in our organization. And I benefited a lot, like I said, all that I really thought as doing the, 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 the session um, were all that I, I was able to you know, relate to transfer most of what I learned into um, the presentation I made. And like, like as we speak right now, our, our organization is, you know, um, implementing the HR business partnership model, which I'm very grateful for, for taking part in the program. Um, apart from that, we, thank you. Apart from that, the session also delivered by Professor Matthew on um, finance for HR business partners was also key for us, as, as one of our colleagues said. Because as HR people, we normally shy away from the figures. You know, when we see the figures like that, we are, we are like, this is not what we, we are here for. But how do we understand and relate with this? Because mind you, HR, we normally consider it as a cost center. We are always the ones, you know, bringing the big budget. But do we know where the monies are coming from, where, the, where the, the, the figures are coming from? And if we are able to understand and analyze financial statements of our organization, it will even help even in salary negotiating, negotiation of bonuses. So most of us related a lot with that particular section because we went, some of us went back, we went to the finance department, asked for the financial statements of the organization, and we were able to do, do some analysis to see whether our organization is financially you know, stable. So that is also key for us. And then um, another one on HR analytics. You know, we, we all agree with, with us that um, HR will generate a lot of data, but not much has been done with the data. We should be able to tell stories with data that we generate. And so that particular session also um, um, helped us a lot. And then about interaction, among mentees, like like um, one of us said, we've had a lot of interaction. Every day on our page, group page, we we, we are either discussing one issue or, or the other. And as executive, my colleagues and myself, we initiated um, some programs. Um, we had a personality profile where each week we, se we select one person. One person is doing this to, to sit on the hot seat. And so we, we put that person on the hot seat and ask all sorts of questions. Tell us about yourself, everything that we need to know. And it was aimed at getting to know one another better. And I think most of us enjoy that program, the personality profile we had on our platform. Um, apart from that, we also 
um, initiated some programs. Unfortunately, COVID came in and could not um, implement them. We, we planned a dinner program. We also planned a weekend trip outside Accra. We, we also planned a trip to Talo Oilfield, somewhere in the Western region. We also planned another trip to CHIHRMP. You understand they are part of the, the organizers. And then, um, unfortunately, uh, we could not you know, um, implement any of these because of COVID. But every day on our you know, platform, we, we engage each other or one another on, on topical HR issues. Um, our, my observation as the leader of the group we realized that um, while some of us enjoy the time with our mentors, others to hardly find time to meet with their, with their mentors, which was a big challenge to most of or mo most people. And um, like the, the mentors to some of the mentees hardly take part in the, in the sessions that we have due to work, um, uh, official duties, we sometimes took them outside Ghana. Um, finally, we want to pledge our support to Arim, um, the organizers of the program, that our doors are open. We've learned a lot, and when it comes to us, we also share or um, pay back all that we, we've learned. Our doors are always open. Um, we will always come and help or assist whenever we are called upon. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Daniel. And I remember the, the first time I met Nixon at Talo, we were supposed to discuss this particular call. And you passed a comment that they shouldn't just pass through the program. We should feel it through their conversation. Then I looked at ladies. So what is he talking about? But now I can feel it through. Papa, where, where are you? Papa, quote one, where is Papa? Please come. And the kind of serious conversations, I wish you were on their platform, on key issues of national development. Initially, when they started, they realized the issues were just <laughs> as of all Now they've moved on. Papa, please. Good evening, everyone. My name is Papa Human Resources at Global Media Alliance. It's a consultancy, PR events consultancy, and we have media houses as well. I heard about the um, HR, so I'm from the first cohort, and we got the notice of the invitation today. Um, I saw it in the afternoon, but it's along my way, and it seems none of uh, other cohort members could make it, so I volunteered to be here at least so that we have a representative from the first cohort. Uh, I want to congratulate uh, the second cohort for going successfully through this very intensive, interesting and educational program. We had 13 months of intensive uh, meetings, the monthly sessions, and then interactions with our mentors. And like your leader said, some of the mentors were not really able to work with the mentees, but there were some who were really giving us a lot of growing pressure. And my mentor, for example, did just that, if not more. I must say that uh, when I joined this, or when I applied, I had worked in HR, but I didn't have any formal training. So I was somebody walking in the desert looking for water. And when I heard about the uh, mentorship program, I decided to apply. I met Nixon and one of my seniors from school on the panel. So we had a very interesting discussion and luckily for me, I was selected. It was very educational for me. One of the reasons why I wanted to be part of it was because I could network and meet other HR practitioners because I hadn't met anyone. And I was still contemplating going to IHRMP. But every time my mentor, whenever I asked her a question, she would say, why don't you go to the school? 
why don't you go to the HR center? So I just when we're about to finish, you know, I had applied and I got into IHR and two. So as soon as I was done with the mentorship, I started there. And it has really changed my whole perspective and horizon on HR. And I realized that that is where I am really meant to be in our group. I want to say a big thank you to Irene. So I wish you all the best. I congratulate the cohort. I want to say a big thank you to the mentors as well. The, uh, the first cohort exists. We also have a WhatsApp platform. In fact, we had an interactive session, I think two months ago or so on Zoom. And it was quite interesting. So we are hoping to organize a few more of those. So hopefully I will get your leader's number so that we can interact. It will be a good opportunity for all of us to network as well, broadening the spectrum of HR practitioners who you know so we can get advice and learn from one another. Thank you all for this opportunity to speak. I wasn't just to, but I really was gracious enough to give me the chance, so I'm very grateful. Thank you. We have been doing the broader phone SME for so many years. But today, the chief executive is here. Please, you are welcome. Give me a round of applause. Good evening. We'd like to get HR practitioners, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to be here with you this evening. And thank you so much for inviting me to be part of your celebration today and to share in your joy. Let me take this opportunity to commend Mrs. Irene Asari and her team for this great initiative and thank the China Europe International Business School and the Chartered Institute of Human Resource Practitioners for their support. Human resource function has become increasingly crucial as a result of this pandemic. To put it in the right perspective, the role of for you as HR is now one of the most sought after in any organization worldwide in this unprecedented time. Besides the general employee well-being and safety, which is paramount, organizations and their HR leads have been focused on productivity, talent, and skills. Many are considering how to adapt hybrid working in fact, for Vodafone in Europe, we are considering we're not going to do the 100%, but it's probably going to be 60% working from home and 40% in the office. However, in Africa, we're considering the reverse because of power and connectivity issues. People would work 40% from the, from home and probably 60% from the office. We have been working from home since March 2020, and it actually has been one of our best years. Um, ever in terms of performance and productivity. However, we miss the social interactions. And so in May 2021, I actually made the decision that I need to come back. I've missed all of you. And because of the, the pandemic, we still can't have everybody in the block. So we show up once a week. You come and then you have discussions and interactions with your friends. It's not about productivity again, because like you said, we're able to achieve a lot if everybody working from home, including the call center. But now it's about collaboration. It's about the social interaction because we are social beings. In fact, when I have my expo with my team, we could have a three-hour period of conversation online and microsoftly. We'll have a productive meeting that year. Now I said every Monday we come to the office and deliver. We could do three, four, five hours because two hours of that would be chatting and turning to the other person and saying, it's talking about something else. And as HR, they will approach you and say, I still can't deliver something at home. And you have to make sure this clock that you have been run running on diversity and inclusion, inclusion, you do not reset that clock. You continue to promote it, even in hybrid working. We are now moving from long-term goals, full year, one year cycle of, of performance goals. We're moving into very short-term quarterly goals because people, you will not see the person every time. You are not going to be able to manage him and, and hope that you can measure the results at the end. Productivity is going to be about your output. It doesn't matter where the person sits. If you focus on very short-term deliverables, you can have very close interaction with this person, whether he's online, offline, 
um, whether it's in person or, or online, and you'll be able to, this is one of the key topics that we are discussing as a company on how we now set um, goals for, for the organization. Another one that we have been looking at is how we tap into the talent pool. I think I already mentioned that. During the pandemic, I was looking for two very key resources. And in the past, it was going to take forever to take, these guys are going to have to serve so much notice, and then I have to work with our international mobility team on how to bring them to Ghana, how to work on permits. It was just going to be a six month journey to get one talent. And I really, really, really needed that key resource to join my business, or two of them. Guess what? I had the interview online. It was taking a year before I met the guy. We had a conference, and the two of them showed up like, okay, you look like the guy I interviewed, but you have been delivering in that company for, for, for months. Um, it's been easier now for people to resign and to join the team. It's flexible now because people will have time to join their family. Just last week, our group HR was sharing with us a survey that 41% of employees will resign. And they will resign because they will look for companies that are willing to support them in remote working because they have seen that it is possible. So if your organization does not adapt, your organization is not ready to, to accept the new way of working and rather put policies in place to measure productivity, people will leave you. And I hope that as HR practitioners, you are ready for this change. Let's talk about culture. Employee engagement is going to now become a very strategic imperative. You should have a plan on how you are going to engage your workforce, keep them energized while they still work from home. I just talked about discrimination. When you start to engage and you say, I want to organize a social event, just remember that you have given two people the permission in the team to work from home. And make sure they don't feel discriminated against because they, they need to feel engaged, they need to feel energized, they need to contribute very positive energy. When I was appointed in 2019, typical, I, I got my, my assistant, my HR, we went around the country, we met people face to face. I've been working in organization for years. But then interacting with the people, getting feedback, we met in the various regions, like the whole country. And that was the style. And then after that, we came up with our strategy. We did the road show. We went out to explain to everybody. And then we started discussing performance. And every quarter, we would do a show. And then pandemic hit. And actually, I have engaged this organization more than I could ever have done before the pandemic. Every month. Now I don't meet the region. I don't travel with my expo to every region. We just sit in our office. And then we have a call. It's like, it, it, it works like um, Facebook Live. It's called Workplace by Facebook. And the entire organization will dine in. And I would, so I would update them on everything that's happening. I would take their questions. And as a leader, I have been more visible to my team than I could ever have been. And this is one area where you really need to support your CEO. People are going to be anxious. People are concerned. They are not clear about the future. The CEO of your company has to show leadership. They have to be very visible. And a lot of this will have to be driven by the HR to get the team to believe that the, the CEO believes in the direction that he or she is setting. The CEO has a, have the, has a heart for the people, has a plan for the future. Even if he or she doesn't, you need to present a front to your people. It's going to be very important. And my HR has given me that support. And I ask that you give the same the same support to, to your CEOs. We have also adopted virtual fun. It will shock you that we've had what we call, we call it a red connect. We have seasoned DJs and they play online. People bring their drinks online. You will see they turn on their videos and they dance with their families on Fridays. Yeah, we have DJs, I was we have DJs. Like it's been fun. They play, we have like music, music, song requests online. We pop the song and sometimes we use it for fundraising. And we supported the Art Foundation. We raised almost 10,000, no, 50,000 CDs online because you request the song 100 CDs, then you purchase a 50 CDs, get there, and then we raised 50,000 CDs online. 
a great fan because you get every suddenly I have commanded that not everybody on one call just have been fun. We've also had movie nights, virtual movie nights. We've had comedy shows. Obi and Bonza has been visiting us online. And we've had great sessions. We've brought in chefs. You know, people are sitting in the house and very stressed out. We are not going to gather them for a long time, even by the restrictions from, from the president. But how are you going to keep your organization engaged as HR? You, we brought in chefs. We were online. People were cooking from their homes. And then they posted the pictures. And these things, if you look at our engagement score, it's been on an all-time high, even without seeing him. And it's because we have been very, very deliberate about how you engage. As a leader, you are going to have to influence people to get things done. And you can influence people if you have built relationships with them. You are not be going to be able to see them to build those relationships, unfortunately, and see my team once a week. So how you are able to use the online tool, not just for meetings. This is the biggest, one of the biggest frustrations that online engagement is bringing up. People are engaging for meetings. You dial in and the PowerPoint starts. And it runs throughout, and then thank you everyone for joining, and the call ends. We have to turn some of these online engagements into collaborative sessions, where it's just a huddle, where it's just a check on what's happening in the function, where people are, are, are made to turn on their videos so you can see their families in the background, where people are made to feel connected to what is happening. Because collaboration is a strong tool that you can use to drive change in the organization. It has really worked for me. We have we, we told the organization that yes, we would not pay anybody off, but we will not be able to pay you all your increments and your allowances and benefits in that year, because things were going to be tough. Yes, we did the salary, we did the salary release, but when I, I sent a notice, I had this um, um, wait, 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 place by call with the team, and I broke the news to the organization and said, in this year, this is what will happen to your allowances, and this is what will happen to your salaries. Would you believe that I got so many messages of, it's okay, Patricia, we understand. This is when people should have gone on strike. But because I have constantly been engaging with them, after my engagements, we post the video. For those who missed it, wherever you are, you can dial it and listen, and then you can watch it later. The message has been so clearly communicated month on month. If you ask any Vodafone employee to wrestle our strategy to you, they will tell you, with, without, I would have struggled. I would have struggled to go around the country every time talking about performance. But using the online tool as a collaborative tool, and not just a tool for meeting, has been transformational. And I really want to recommend this to, to all of you as HR practitioners. People know their job. If they're not doing their job, you can let them go. But you can start from the basis that you have employed good people. And what you need now is the relationship and the connection for them to ha have a heart for the organization. People who close five o'clock are just there to take what they want. There are people who you don't need to hope to stay late because they now feel a connection to your brand. And that is where you need to get your, employ your, your employees. And worse when they are now working from home, and you can't even see him to be strict about eight o'clock he didn't show up, five o'clock left. How would you get a connection? How would you get a heart? Collaborating, communicating, showing them that you care, showing visible leadership is going to be a fantastic tool that I recommend to all of you to use as HR practitioners. And please support your CEOs to use this. Let me just talk about one more thing, which is preparing for the future. As I said, the future of work is going to be very, very, not, I'm sorry, I don't want to say the word scary, but it's going to hit us in the face and you will be shocked. And I'm sure it's hitting many of you in your organizations already. I use my organization always when I speak to people so that they know the reality is here. We're talking about automation, we're talking about robotics, and it sounds very foul. Many of the things that we are doing today in my organization is done by robotic process automation. We've automated, and some of them are done by coders in my team. I had a discussion one day, I brought, we have now started the agile way of working and putting people in, in spots, and they are delivering. 
And so one time I met them, I don't see them, they are just as frantic in some way. You can imagine how unsettling it is when in the past you have the person and ask me, have you done your job? Two weeks they go away and then they come and deliver in prayer. So they came and they were working on this uh, uh, robot that you see on my sofa. So this guy comes, his, his pants are here, his brain and his hair is like, and I'm like, so what do you do in the team? I'm the, I'm the scrum master, I'm this, I'm this. So, so what's your job? He says, I'm the conversationalist. I only chat with the robot. That's my job. Really? When did this guy build this skill? And which HR interviewed him to be able to recruit him to chat with the robot? The demands of the future is going to require skill sets that are very different from what most of us have been trained with. And as HR, yes, I'm not expecting us to become coders, or I don't expect us to become developers, but we have to know. We have to know the skills that are going to be required for the future so that we can support the company when it comes to looking for talent. It can be very scary, because as I'm saying, the person to say, what kind of, you have to look at the role profiles now and rewrite some of them because some of the skill sets that we've written are no longer relevant. We would need new skill sets. We need, so what we have done in Vodafone is to launch what we call one more skill. I don't care where you are, which is whether you're in HR or finance, everybody has to just go through one skill training. My exo and I have gone through coding. Believe me, I don't want to become a developer. I have moved. <laughs> but every, every one of my exo, we sat down and we, we brought the trainers into the room and they taught all of us full day session to code. I think my HR had the nicest web page when we were done, you know. But it was very like why am I learning this one? But it helps you to understand what the skill is, what it looks like, what these people have been talking about. It just helps you to know what's out there. We, we have agile training, we have robotics, we have um, internet of things, we have big data, and it's all online and it is mandatory for every employee. Every employee by the end of this you should have taken one more skill training. If you can do two or three, that's fine. It's not because you become an engineer, it's not because you want to become a developer, but you have to know where the world is going, is getting into. A lot of the jobs in my call center have been taken by this robot. It's more efficient than any, 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 anything that any human being can do. So what do I do with the skills? What do I do with the human being who works with my call? This, this thing is not far off. It is right here with us. And it is important that as HR, as I already said, we need to start looking beyond the today. We owe it to our company to start bringing experts into the company. Even if we don't know, just find the experts. Let them come, present to the experts. Set the mind, set the thinking around where the world is going. So that when the time comes and we have to make the change, it is important and we'll be able to do it. In conclusion, you have chosen a unique field that has power to help organizations develop a very competitive advantage by effectively managing people and performance. Businesses without a good people strategy or simply fail may not be able to predict the future, but we rely on you to help us rethink our strategy and what we do today in order to survive tomorrow. Take advantage of the crisis to address some of the fundamental HR challenges in your organization today in order to remain re resilient for the future. I wish you the very best and congratulations once again. I intentionally didn't want to talk about this. I just want to help you shock everybody. So listen. She is currently the telecom CEO of the year. And you know how to get there. This is not politics. It's based on expertise and competence. Before people will vote for you. Please. Secondly, should I continue? But there's something I learned today. Patricia 101. Future of work. Automation. Skills. Soft skills. Which you need. What are they? You yourself, if you don't know the skills as an HR person. How will you be employed the person? How? Patricia talked about inclusion, remote of work. Develop an engagement plan, not just give instructions. HR, my boy, when they work in morning. No! What is your engagement plan? And interestingly, Prof, we need to do this. The Saturday call, the evening, the virtual, 
you will cook since you are starting immediately. So please go into your individual organization and go and organize that, especially Patricia, for you. Eh? Theophilus actually changed job when he joined this. And he's now an HR specialist. Please organize the, the show, then let them drink something. <laughs> and we should know how to turn our online sessions. We have closed presentation. No, start that on Monday. No, start that tomorrow. Free advice. You don't get it anywhere unless on Irene for HR mentoring program. So keep it at the back of your mind. <laughs> so let's move quickly to the presentation of uh, certificate the grad ones. Uh, Rachel Agilitete. She's the transport, she works, she's the HR manager at Transport and General Holdings Limited. Please give her a round of applause. <laughs> I've graduated and I've never had two very important personalities in me once a week. You can only have it on this program. Hannah Adwa, Hannah. Mavis, Anna. Mavis is the HR manager for Just Investment Global Limited. Give her a round of applause, please. Andrew. Andrew used to work with uh, a bank through this program. He's now the deputy head, human resource, food and drugs authority, Ghana. It was very troublesome, this gentleman, yes. Andrew. Eugenia. Eugenia. Paulson. Theophilus Takikomi who used to work with one company and now is an HR specialist because of this program. Please come. Thank you very much. Pamela Margaret, please come. She's the HR and compliance officer. Thank you very much. We are so grateful. Please give a round of applause, please. Thank you. Purity. Yes. ICGC, HR officer. Doing the custom project. You had issues with the church, right? Thank you very much. You are grateful. Thank you very much. Alexander, please. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alex. Nana Adwa, thank you very much for coming. <laughs> Elizabeth, thank you very much. <laughs> Elizabeth Mauti, Elizabeth, please. Thank you. Abel Edu is a national fire, Ghana Fire Service officer. He posted his picture on the page and I was scared. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. We are grateful. Laurentia, please. Laurentia Jifa Asari. Thank you very much. Daisy, get ready. After Laurentia, you follow. Thank you very much, Laurentia. Daisy, mind, say. Okay. Janet Adole Boy. Janet Adole Boy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Janet Adole Boy. Daniel, the captain. Daniel, the captain. Daniel, the captain. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Precious Edu Danso. Precious Edu Danso. Precious Edu Danso. Thank you very much.
Thank you. Kwefu Ope. Kwefu Ope. The Regional Human Resource Officer for PBC Limited. During the interview stage, we asked him, how will you be attending the sessions? He said, I have no choice. I've saved for it. This gentleman. Please give him a round of applause. Because he lives far away. And during the Capstone project, anytime you call him, there's a problem with his network. And he will tell you, I'm using Vodafone because Patricia is here. Thank you. <laughs> Let's continue. Alice Amanda Bands. Alice. Where is Alice? Thank you very much. Oh, it's the truth. You can ask him. It's the truth. Thank you very much. Alice, thank you. Derek Kwefu Efiye. Derek Kwefu Efiye. Thank you very much. He's the Regional Human Resource Associate for Food and Agriculture Organization. Thank you. So we have two pressures, a lady and then the male. Yes, please, the gentleman. Pressures. He works with Alisa Hotel. Thank you very much, Precious. The last and not the least, Jaula Yahuza. Thank you very much. So this gentleman works at uh, Konfuanochi Teaching Hospital. He never missed there. Eh? He was always coming, Prof, next time we need to do sessions outside Accra. Then we will travel. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Oh, please give him a round of applause. He did so well. He did so well. Thank you. Thank you very much, Prof. Thank you very much, Irene. So please get seated. So let's talk about the future plan. What's next about this program? And I have the privilege to invite uh, Van Dyke Lomote, please. Thank you. So through the HR mentoring program, um, we've, we've had about 45 mentees. And so in the coming cohort, we are hoping to add 20 more mentees to the program. Um, it's going to be better. It's going to be stronger. We've learned over the two, two cohorts. Uh, and so there are going to be a lot of improvements. Just that this time around, it's going to be for six months instead of the 12 months experience. So um, as it has always been, our objective is simple. Uh, it's, it's, it's just to help raise and shape a new generation of transformational HR leaders. Um, the world has changed um, from what a keynote speaker said. Uh, we, we, we can all relate to that. And so um, there, this is even a better time to have a program like this. And so we are still committed to our objective to help raise and shape the new generation of HR leaders in the country and beyond. Um, this time around, the program is gonna focus on three key areas. One area is gonna be on the area of personal leadership development, because um, the basic understanding is that you can only become an effective leader if you lead yourself well. And so one focus is gonna be on personal leadership development to help the mentees uh, through the process of developing strong personal leadership. Uh, of course, we are going to focus on some HR knowledge areas through the program and then help mentees also build key HR skills as part of the program. Um, so we've done some little restructuring to the program. Uh, you used to have about 12 different models. This time around, it's going to be six very strong areas. One of the key things that a keynote speaker mentioned is uh, everything has changed. A new set of skills is required from the HR professional. So one model is going to focus on the bold new transformational HR leader. In this particular model, we are going to consider what are the set skills that are that is required um, to be a transformational HR leader in this disruptive times. So one model is going to focus on that. One of the key models that we've introduced um, coming for three is developing personal leadership. Um, and also current trends in HR in the future of work. So these are three new models we've introduced. We still have the HR as a business partner, the HR leader as a chief agent, and the finance for HR leaders. It is gonna be very, very wonderful. Um, we still have our six key delivery methods. There are gonna be case studies, one-on-one -on -one mentoring, assignments and readings um, to help participants engage with thought leaders on key HR issues monthly interactive facilitation, 
There's going to be a capstone project as usual. And at this time around, we're also going to have a guest lecture um, as part of the program. Um, the program this time around is going to have 20 participants in total, drawn from diverse industries. 50% of it is going to be virtual, and 50% of the program is going to be in person. And as I mentioned earlier on, the program is going to be for six months without eight meetings in total. So these are the key timelines regarding the program. Um, application is going to be opened coming 7th of July. So what we ask of you is that once the application is open, um, just spread the word to your colleagues and your friends that may be in other organizations. Deadline for application will be 28th July. And we hope to commence the program on 20th September and 30th March 2022, the program will end. So these are the critical timelines for the program. Um, we are still in great partnership with Calvin Clay. Um, the Calvin Clay team behind our Nasari um, is still one of the key partners of the program. And um, the China European International Business School, our strong partners, will still be part of the program. And then the Chartered Institute of Human Resource Management practitioners in Ghana will still be one of our key partners. So this is what we have coming cohort three starting this September. Uh, it's going to be massive. It's going to be powerful. Um, we hope that through this program, we are going to raise the new set of leaders within the country, shaping the practice of HR. So this will be it for 2021 and 2022. Thank you very much. For the past 10 years, we have been ranked among the best. And our MBA is the second best. I'm repeating it, and I will repeat it. The second best in the world. So it's a privilege to be here and to also have the chief executive of all that for now. I'm a customer. I just want to please. <laughs> As I'll give her my number. <laughs> so during the program, we have some exciting moments. We have some participants that we want to take this opportunity to give them some awards. Because they did so well. Everybody did so well. The mentees did so well. But there were some participants. So I'll call upon Prof and Irene to please come forward to help us to, to, to acknowledge these participants. So we have for the best participants. So please give them a round of applause. We have some. For the best participants, we have Lauren Shayad Jifa Atari. Lauren Shayad Jifa Atari. We have three of them. Laurentia, please. She did so well on time management. Every single thing you expect from her. Thank you very much, Laurentia. The second best participant doing the program is Andrew. Andrew, we are so grateful. Andrew, we are so grateful. Please, thank you very much. Andrew, thank you very much. Thank you. And finally, we have Derek Kweku Efriye. Derek, Derek, thank you very much. You did so well. Anytime we had the captain, you were you always logging early. Thank you. It was ready to work and learn. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. And as I said, there is no mentoring, HR mentoring program in this country. But what is significant about this one is that we allow you to do a capstone project. And interesting, our capstone project is for you to identify an HR problem. And the group that did so well, and please, the day they did their presentation for the final pitch, all our judges were international, like Vodafone and Thieves. Everything was international. So the best group, so, so we, we, we put them into groups to identify issues, to identify major problems, and then come out with their solution. The best group that had the best capstone project has the following members. So please come forward. Theophilos Takikobi, Pamela Maverick, Purity, Alex Ander, Adwa, Nana Adwa, and Elizabeth. They did so well. Thank you very much. We are so grateful. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for everything. They worked as a team. So please. Oh, please take, let them take some pictures, yes. They did so well. So we have certificate for each member. Yes. Please, please, oh, oh 
It will be given to you, no other group. Wait, please. Pamela, please. Pamela, come forward, please. Pamela, purity. Alexander, purity. Alex. Nanadwa. Congratulations. Elizabeth. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. And then Elizabeth. Elizabeth, thank you very much. Thank you very much. So our last awards are the biggest improvements. So during the interview sessions, we identify some key people. We identify the issues they had. So we did pre and post the biggest improvement. Theophilus Taki for me. Purity Ayram. And Mr. Precious Dew. Give them a round of applause. Prof, thank you very much. Oh, oh, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Thank you very much. Prof, thank you. Irene, thank you very much. Please give them all a round of applause. I would like to take the opportunity to invite uh, Nathan to, to come and tell us something, something very important about new things you want to do. And Nixon is a partner, he's a managing partner with Irene, and I know them well, okay? So give him a round of applause, please. Uh, it's really a real pleasure to me to be with you on your graduation. I mean, I imagine the first day we said, it's still COVID, but we're still going ahead. Because when COVID hit, we had a discussion. I had a discussion with Irene, and I asked Irene, are you still going to continue? Because at that point, we were on your own. I, I was managing transitions within the company that was down with Palo Alto, and there was a lot that I was doing. And Irene said, Nixon, come on to me. We will finish the, the program. And truly, 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 we are here. So I really well done for everything that you've done, making sure that the program never fails, but we still have it and we are still running it. And as you heard from Dr. Van Dyke, he's actually doctor, uh, he's Dr. Van Dyke. Um, he, the program is not going to end. Calvin Clay is still going to be a partner and going to ensure that we support Irene with SIP and then with CIHRM to deliver the program, the third phase of the program and that we for to it. But as you leave, I will leave you with three things. Uh, being an HR professional myself, there are things that I have done that I believe have made me move through the ladder, which I think can help you as well. Professionalism, you should never do away with it. What do I mean by professionalism? Being competent at what you do, knowing your subject matter, making sure you understand the core areas of HR, and not just knowing them, but how you deliver them as well. Because you are going to be judged by the likes of Patricia, I mean your CEOs, your business leaders, by how you turn up and how you go about things. So be mindful of that. I also want you to have integrity. Let your word be your bond. If you say we are going to deliver this at this time, make sure you deliver that at that time. So have that integrity within the business so that your employees that you support, the business leaders that you support, will all believe you and work with you and adhere to your advice. And then the last point I will make is that you should be courageous. It's not easy. Some of the decisions require boldness, and you must exhibit that boldness when it comes. You should be courageous in the work you are going to do. I was so pleased when many of you touched on the fact that we share conversation was one aspect that you take from the force, and you are going to need it. And when it comes, do apply. All right.
So that, that is my advice to you. But the world of work has changed, and we need to adapt to work. Things are not going to be the same. Patricia said, in their work, at the group level, they are looking at 50% of the time working from home, and then 40% in the office. In Ghana, they are looking to do the reverse. If you read a uh, number of researches out there, there was one I saw with PwC, there was one I did in my own company, and most people said, we want to work between two to three days from the office, which is the same as two to three days from home, because they are only five days. So if you work two days in the office, you work two days from home. So that, that, that is what we are thinking with. And as think that professionals, we have to be active. And that is where we as Cabin Play come in. We have got experts who understand um, the HR practice. And with our core mandate of helping professionals to grow and businesses to grow, we are there to support you go through that. So as you go back into your workplaces, as you look at things to do, have at the back of your mind, how can Cabin Play help you? And we are always available and we'll be coming anytime you call on us. We work on recruitment, we do HR outsourcing, we provide HR, multiple HR solutions, we do leadership and training, and a host of other things that we do. And so when you need that support, I know I can count on you. You are going to call us to help deliver. Already some of you have contacted us just about two weeks ago. We were with one of you. Uh, Derek, I hope you don't mind me mentioning your name. So we, we organized a leadership training program for the regional office for Africa, for FAO, which had all the African leaders. And it went very well. And prior to that, we had done work with uh, Ecobank, we've done work with NPL, we've done work with a number of other institutions, SMB, d Light across Africa. So we, we've done a lot, and we can do the same for you. So when you need help, Please don't, 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 don't think. Follow us and we'll be there to support you. So I want to once again congratulate all of you and say well done. And then as you go back, remember that there are people who are counting on you and don't fail them at the workplace. Thank you. <laughs> there, there's one program that we are launching uh, in July. So come first July, we are launching the program. And I want you to know that we will be doing that every month. It's called Learn at Lunch. We want to promote the idea of professionals taking their leisure time to learn something new. The first session will be on emotional intelligence, and we'll follow that up with topical issues that will help professionals grow. So we will need you to uh, take a look. We will be coming to you. We will be posting them through our social media handles. And when the time comes, as gatekeepers, we will need you to nominate up some of your employees to join. If you want us to run for your organizations alone, we are very open and we can do that for you as well. We will itemize all the topics that we'll be doing, which can help you to plan as well and see how best we can let your employees and your leaders take advantage of them. Uh, as gatekeepers, we'll be opening up to you as well and we will entrust that you will join as well. So that's one piece of information I want to add on to what you do. So if you want productivity at lunch, if you want to grow your company during lunch break, if you want to enhance, if you want effectiveness, think about them. They are here. And I know them. And I'm endorsing them. Now, I would like to call on Derek Efri to come and give us the vote of thanks. Derek, please give him a round of applause. Thanks. Miss Irene Asari, the brain behind this initiative. It has been a life-changing experience and we are ever so grateful for this opportunity. A special thanks also goes out to the team at the China Europe International Business School and the IHRMP for their great support throughout our journey. Especially Prof Professor Matthew and Lady who have been very instrumental right from the start. I would also like to say a very big thank you to all our amazing mentors who have dedicated their time and effort to develop our skills, behaviors, and knowledge. We say thank you for all the sacrifice. I must say that I cannot leave here uh, without showing our profound gratitude to the seeding HR experts who delivered valuable sessions on topical HR issues 
which we are now leveraging in our various organizations to add value. To all the cameramen, the technical team, who always work behind the scenes to ensure we had a seamless session every month, you were definitely amazing. It is often said that gratitude is the altitude that takes tribes to your altitude. And so on behalf of my fellow graduates, those present and those who couldn't be here with us today, I'd like to say thank you for being here with us and to also render all of the sacrifices, the time, the efforts, the opportunities to really build us uh, our capacity in various ways. To all my colleagues, I say the relationship shouldn't end here. This should be the beginning of a valuable network of the best in class HR practitioners in Ghana. Thank you all for the connection. Thank you all for the great journey. Thank you all for building our careers and we are definitely going to make you proud. Thank you. Now, sorry to take your time, but um, we have a little presentation to make and I'd just like to call and then undo as well. If you have the presentation here. Okay, so, I mean, as you can imagine, people have invested their time, their efforts, their energies, just to help us grow in our careers. And just a little way to say thank you, we also want to appreciate the brain behind this initiative, those who have held our hands and supported us through the journey. So I'd like to call on stage, Ms. Irene Asari, to do a little presentation. And I'd like to use this opportunity to invite the CEO for Vodafone to do us the honors by presenting this to Irene. So I'll read the citation. In recognition of your immeasurable contributions toward our career transformation, growth, and progress as early HR practitioners, we appreciate you for the commitment, investment, and dedication to our development journey in HR. You made a difference in our career under the HR Mentorship Program, and for these reasons, we honor you with this citation. Your kind is rare. From the cohort two of the mentees, HR Mentorship Program, we say thank you very much, Irene. <laughs> and that's just not it. We also have a plaque just to appreciate you. <laughs> Let's give her a round of applause. Thank you very much. Please, please don't go. I'll need you here again. Thank you very much, Irene. I'd also like to invite on stage Mr. Hoff Matthew Chami. I'd like to invite you on stage, please. Prof has been very instrumental, even though he's not from an HR background, he has been very interested in all of our activities and we can only say thank you um, for being very supportive. And I'd like to read the citation now. In recognition of your unwavering support and unrelenting guidance in shaping our understanding of finance as mentees, we express gratitude to you for making us appreciate and interpret financial statements as HR practitioners. We owe our grasp of this field to you, and nothing can come close to the inspirational presence of a mentor and a wonderful scholar like yourself in our career journey. May the blessings of God be upon you and your entire family. From the cohort two mentees, the HR Mentorship Program. And we also have a plug for Prof. And we'd like to apologize for adding an, an additional T to your name. We hope that you forgive us for that. But thank you very much for all the sacrifices, for all the involvement, and for all the support throughout this period. And last but not the least, I mean, it would be unfair for us to live here without appreciating 
our big sister, Lady, who has been very instrumental. We'd like to invite Lady on stage. She's been there throughout from the scratch, right from our interview, coordinating us. And we can only say thank you very much, Lady, for being very helpful and for, 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 for really standing our stress. <laughs> And for the troubles that we've given you, we, we are really sorry and we are really glad that you didn't leave us. So we'd like to read the citation in recognition of your seamless coordinating prowess during the 2021 HR Mentorship Program. We say a big thank you to you for your support and kindness. And with our fondest gratitude, we honor you with this citation from the Cohort 2 HR Mentorship Program. And on this note, we'd like to say thank you very much. This has not been the end for us. This is definitely the beginning of a really true relationship. And we are really glad to have been part of this experience. We didn't leave here the same. We've obviously grown from where we were. And hopefully, we had some, some video of us during our interview stages just to really track the progress. But for me, it's been, it's been, it's been amazing. And, and, and I can only tell of the good stories about this program. And, and I encourage you to also um, tell people about the HR mentorship program. Don't don't just be the only one to benefit from it. Give that opportunity to others as well. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Hey. So we have copies each. The team has copies each outside. So please take one. I would like to take this opportunity to invite Irene. So thank you very much. But obviously, um, gosh, I'm so touched. I have a tear in my eye. There you go. So um, I, I, I do what I do because I believe very strongly in impact and giving back what others in my career have given. Can you hear me well? Yes. Um, I believe in giving back what others have given onto me at some point in my career. I know that back then we didn't really have formal mentorship programs, but we had people who really looked out for me in my career. I was just like you, um, unconfident, believe it or not, um, sometimes doubting, um, but people, somebody took a bet on me, and here I am today. And I think that being able to have this network and opportunity um, for you all is the, is the little I can do to give back. Um, I know the profession is challenging, um, difficult, but also extremely rewarding. So I just urge you to keep on. This is just a little milestone in your journey. We, as the HR Mentoring Programme, are so looking forward to your story so that we can see you doing amazing works wherever you find yourself in whatever organization you work for as future HR leaders of at least this country and beyond. And so that's the challenge that I leave you and you are more than capable of doing it. So walk away here believing in yourself and I know that you can do it. Um, we want to take a moment myself and my team to say thank you, uh, firstly to Professor Matthew. We have a little token for you. <laughs> Just to say thank you very much. Your support is always unwavering and we truly appreciate and we appreciate the power of education, development, growth, and we look forward to the journey ahead. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And I want to just um, ask Patricia, we have a little something just from us to you. We know your job is incredibly busy. Um, there are many things, many places that you could be, but you chose to come and be with us. We're very grateful, your insight, your sharing, your leadership journey, your vulnerability, you know, has been amazing and immense and certainly has impacted me personally along with many others. Um, and we truly support you as uh, the CEO of uh, Vodafone Ghana. We wish you all the very best in your journey. We know that you'll continue on, onwards and upwards. 
and we are right behind you. So we say thank you so much. invited guests. Thank you very much, our mentors. Thank you very much, sis, Prof, Irene, Patricia. Thank you very much. And thank you very much, our mentees. We'll come to the end of the program.